Well, we don't. It's not like say once we stop going to church, we just stop getting the word and stuff. Like now to this day, every week I'm listening to TD Jakes, Jakes, and she listening to what's his name. I don't go to church. God don't live in church. They say the body is the temple. I'm walking in church right now. I guess um, I believe when you go to church, you you feel this like sense of relief, or you know, people go to church to just like I guess pray their what they done bad that week, and they feel like it's like a restart of their week or whatever the case may be. But I feel like nobody's perfect. Not even pastors or preachers, or no one can tell you this is going to take you to hell. This is going to do not because your own relationship with God or with the higher power or whatever the case may be is your own personal relationship. God doesn't want you to go to church on Sunday. He doesn't want you to throw some money in the offering. He doesn't want your attention. He hasn't asked you for quiet time. He's not interested in your songs. I would say that I am uninspired and bored with the walk of faith that I have seen my parents walk. They love God, truly are incredibly generous, but they lack mission and they lack obedience that causes inconvenience upon themselves. Greetings, I'm G. Craig Lewis of EX Ministries and welcome to another exposition episode. This is our eighth episode. This season has eight. gone by so fast. Mm -hmm. I cannot believe we are already up to eight, but we have covered some things this season. Yes, we have. Uh, this has been a very good season and uh, thank you so much for all your uh, support, your comments and different things. And we're going to do something special on our 10th episode. So that'll be our final episode for the season. But we're going to cover your questions concerning each of the episodes. So if you have questions, something that you felt wasn't covered in the actual episode pertaining to the subject mm -hmm. of the episode. Now, it's got to be pertaining to the subject. Don't be saying y'all need to get colors on the set and all of this <laughs> stuff. Somebody said our set was glowing like Mount Olympus. Don't be saying dumb stuff like that. And, right. and please don't be trying to holler at Carmina uh, <laughs> on, on the set. I mean, we know she's the only female up here, but don't be asking for her phone number and talking about her outfits and all of that. Man, folks, they're they yeah, they, they they going crazy. Just wild. And I said that to Carmina. She's like, I mean, what am I supposed to wear? <laughs> right. So look, <laughs> leave, leave her alone and uh, actually ask questions pertaining to the subject matter of each one. We did one on divorce and remarriage. You can ask questions about that one. I know what the question is going to be. The main question is, well, what if you're getting beat? What if it's abuse? What if it's... Yeah. Okay, so just go on and ask that. We'll answer it for you. But any other uh, questions you have concerning the show topics that we've been dealing with, just send those in the comments. We'll, we'll keep uh, an eye out for them, and we'll deal with those in episode 10, okay? Yep. But today we have Jay Bryant. How are you doing, Jay? I'm doing good. Jay's with me. And then, of course, Carmina Barnett is here. And we're going to be talking today about the right church. Last week, we did the right faith. Now we're dealing with the right church, finding the right church, all of these things. And I know it's a popular saying to say there is no perfect church because once you walk in it, it's no longer perfect, whatever, whatever. Yeah. And so, you know, I feel like I'm at a perfect church. I mean, I, just my uh, opinion, uh, because I'm not one that's looking for what's wrong with it, but I'm always celebrating the things that are right with it. And, yeah. um, and I think that should be our genuine attitude. We should feel that way about where we go. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so we're going to be talking about that today. So Carmina, what you, what you got? Well, gentlemen, we have a lot of questions talking about this, but before we discuss about how to find the right church, let's revisit the reason why we go to church. What's the value of corporate worship? Uh, well, it's, it's a lot. It's, there's many values to corporate worship. Okay. So physical fellowship uh, does a couple of things. It strengthens us. It encourages us. It admonishes us. 
Um, and it challenges us when it's coupled together with sound teaching, right? So Hebrews 10 and 25 talks about that. It says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, right? But as the manner of some is, but exhorting um, one another as so much more as, ye the, day, as the day is approaching. So um, the, the idea that church isn't important or the idea that church is something that we can do away with goes completely against scripture. We just read it. It is something that definitely God expects us to do. And it's, it's, for, it's a benefit, right? It's, 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 it's a benefit. Yeah, and your question is actually a trick question because till you find the right church, you can't get the right value. Yeah. And so, you know, the value of the church is, the ch you know, that particular church. Right. So we're not talking about the body of Christ as a whole when it pertains to where you are worshiping. Right. You're not worshiping with the body of Christ as a whole, but you're actually worshiping with a sect or a cult of the body of church, uh, 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 of the body of Christ. And I know those two words got somebody yeah. scratching their head. So just forget I said that. Uh, but or cult just and sect. stick to the definition. Right, of right. Those aren't bad words. Like, but of course, you know, Jim Jones made, made them bad. Right. So, anyway, uh, but we, all, uh, we almost have to discuss finding the right church first so that it will be beneficial for people that join it. So right. that's kind of what we want to talk about. Yeah. Uh, it's very important to find the right fit for you. <clears throat> And, and what you need out of a church. You know, folks was, was slamming me this week because I posted uh, Path of Revelation. Shout out to Matt and Gabe, my boys out there. Up, they came and blessed us with, you know, with rap. Uh, you know, and I'm 50 years old and I, 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 I love it. You, you know, I'm yeah. producing it. Yeah, you like, are. I'm producing Jesus, parts of Jay's album. You so, are. Uh, and he ain't just doing that because I'm a pastor. I'm pretty good. No, you are. But um, see, see, yeah. <laughs> he feel like he have to say that. Yes, he's good. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> but Path the Revelation, they're a great group. So I posted it and folks just going crazy. Ooh, this is a contradiction. You ain't supposed to like rap. You ain't well, first of all, why are you telling me what I like? Second of all, I ain't never said I had a problem with rap. Never. And rap is just a and here's the thing that gets me. <laughs> The same folks that say, because I know pastors, we won't, you'll never hear no rapping at our church and, and got the flaming homosexual on the organ, yes, sir, writing man. the songs, yep. singing gay gospel artist music. Yep. I mean, but, but oh, but no, the rapping, see, the rapping is the world. Gay ain't the world. <laughs> Why get so quiet? Oh, I don't have no audience. Okay. Well, <laughs> anyway, gay, gay is not, uh, you know, you can't try to dog a genre or style of music because you don't like it. Right, right. But church is a preference. <clears throat> you might like bluegrass banjo worship. Mm -hmm. So you need to find you a snake handling church. <laughs> 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 but wherever you, you know, <laughs> that may be what you want. <laughs> I mean, you may want to dance yeah. with the pythons on Sunday you might, and yeah. prove your Holy Ghost level. I don't know, but whatever it is, that's your choice. So right. don't, you know, don't, 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 let's don't pick at the music and the, all, all that's just preference. All yeah. that's just, you know, styles and different things that we, you know, we just choose kind of what we want. Uh, but we're in a time now where there is a lot of corruption in the church. So you yeah. have to be careful. So I'm, you know, I'm not ever just looking at the music and the singing and different things. But you need to look at the integrity and different things of the ministry as well. First Timothy four and one says, now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. So the Bible is telling us that in these times, which are the latter times, y'all believe we're in the latter times. We're absolutely. OK, yes. so many are going to depart from the faith. Mm -hmm. right. That's how you have videos of people talking about there's no hell. You got videos of people saying that Christianity is a lie, all these different things. So you got to be real careful where, where you plant your family, because that's going to be a major influence in, in how they're raised. So it's very important that they get in the right place. And that's our responsibility to find that. Exactly. Right. Well, let's talk about this for a moment. Should you join one specific church or, or does it matter? Does it matter if you visit various churches? Some people feel like as long as I'm in a church, even mm -hmm. if I'm not a member there, can you do that? Can you move around like that? Uh, I mean, it, it, if you don't want to ever have any like true foundation. <laughs> I'm, uh, so ch church hopping will keep you from um, being planted in an actual, like, like really planted in a fellowship. So what happens is when you, let, let's think about it from uh, an ag agricultural standpoint. Okay. What happens when you plant a, a flower or a plant and then you keep uprooting it? 
right? So what mm -hmm. happens is it, it'll suffer growth mm -hmm. or um, it'll be subject to dying if you keep changing its sustenance. Mm -hmm. So you can go to one church and get the word or understanding one particular way that could be 100% false. You can go to somebody else who probably shouldn't have been pastoring this teaching from a, a deficit or a void, mm -hmm. and now it's all emotion. Mm -hmm. Then you can go somewhere else and you got a flat-footed Bible preaching, fire and brimstone God that's giving you everything that you need. Mm -hmm. And now you got these three different versions in your head and you could just decide, you know what? I think all of it is fake. So it's just it's, it's just a really oh, tough situation. Do a mega mix, right? Um, yeah, yeah. When I, however you feel that Sunday, that's the <laughs> church you go to, right? Is it spiritual confusion. Is it spiritual confusion? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's a, that's exactly God what it is. is. Not the author of confusion. And not not even a little bit. Okay. If we look at Psalms one and three, it says, "And he shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water." Um, and this is in reference to just being firmly planted. If, if you if anybody knows that water is powerful, especially moving water. Mm -hmm. So if you if, if if the Bible tells us to be planted like or plant it like we're by the rivers of water. That means that we need to have a firm foundation in where we are, right? And then it says that bringeth forth its fruit in, in, it, in his season. Well, seasons come and go. So if you're not planted firmly somewhere, and that season comes around where what you got previously will sustain you in that next, you know, it's just so mm -hmm. God designed this thing perfectly. His leaf is also, also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. So this just sounds like you need a strong man that's that that that's the pastor of the church that models um, the biblical example of what that's supposed to look like. Mm -hmm. And why would you even have to visit several churches if your church is adequate? Right. So, you know, and I know some people church hop because they don't want accountability. They really don't want anybody to know. them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing, because they know they're going to have to act right if they get into a real fellowship, right. you know, where where there is accountability. Yeah. You know, I thank God we have so many men here. I always brag about the fact that we have more men and women at our church. Uh, and it's it, it's crazy because all these brothers here hold each other accountable. 100 percent. You know, we don't we don't I mean, we don't play that. You yep. know, we are looking out for each other. And so a lot of people church hop so they don't ever build that relationship. Mm -hmm. And then when a church is not sufficient uh, and meeting your needs, then you shouldn't even be. I mean, why are you going there in the first place? Right. And that's my thing. Why, why are you going there? And I know, you know, tradition. And, oh, my great grandmama met Harriet Tutman at this church. <laughs> and that's the only reason you're going there, because your name is etched in the pew, uh, you know, yeah. with, a, with a knife. Uh, you know, all of that kind of stuff. <laughs> but, a, uh, <laughs> but a person that cannot plant themselves consistently in, a, uh, consistently in a fellowship is usually like that in every aspect of their lives. So they don't want accountability because they're rolling stone mm -hmm. or they, you know, they just they're like that all over, you know. Uh, and like you were saying, water is a powerful force. So when the Bible says uh, be a tree planted, mm -hmm. it means that no matter what kind of waves or, or, or what kind of a. Uh, 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 power the water has, you're not moved by it. Right. right. And there's another uh, passage back when Jacob was blessing his children, uh, and, and he stated that one of them was unstable like water, mm -hmm. because water represents being unstable. Mm -hmm. You know, the inconsistency. All waves are different, never right. the same way. All of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's how people, be, you know, people that act like that uh, uh, with church act like that in life. Yeah. You never find a person that's consistent in their personal life, but inconsistent at church. Right. And vice versa. You'll never find anyone that's consistent at church and then inconsistent everywhere else. It's just an unstable person is unstable, you know, like water, no matter what. Right. Uh, even with God, they're unstable. And that's yeah. the sad part. Ephesians 4 and 14 says that we henceforth be no more, no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men, the cunning craftiness uh, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. So even Paul is stressing, let's don't be children tossed to and fro by all this foolishness that's going on, but let's be planted. So visiting and traveling around, going to all different churches and all that stuff, you're not planted anywhere. So you don't have that stability and I mean, you don't have that consistency. Right. 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 Yeah. Well, you know what you mentioned about <clears throat> Big Mom. So what about if it's a situation where you grew up in a church, your whole family is there, you've spent your whole life there, but you're not necessarily growing anymore. Should you leave? Or, you know, how's that going to impact everybody? <laughs> um, that, that, that's an interesting question. So let's start here. So if, if you go to church for show, mm -hmm. right, or for personal accolades or just to see friends and family, then you may need to do something different for the sake of your family and their future. Mm -hmm. and, and I've had to make that decision before. 
Um, and I think it just boils down to the person and how serious they are about going after God. Mm -hmm. um, it, it comes to a point in your life where you have to make a decision that God is the 100 percent focus of your life, living for him, being obedient to him, living righteously for him. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and, and in that process, um, everyone needs to go to church with that, that particular mindset. Right. So, OK, yeah, you, you, you know, I grew up in a family church where we went from one building to the next building to the next as the church grew. Mm -hmm. And everybody from my from my grandmother down to, you know, the youngest cousin or whoever may, may have been was in the same church for so long. Okay. Um, and then as we grew up and we started going in our different ways and things of that nature. But one of the toughest things for me um, in that process is hearing God versus what you're used to. So pulling you from a, a comfortable place or a comfortable um, environment. And, and if you're going to be stretched, as, if we, as we use church jargon, God will stretch you, right? If you're going to be stretched, which means if your faith is going to be tested, you have to follow God, right? You, you can't obviously see the end of it. If you, if, and then, but if we look at Acts 4 and 32, it says, and the multitude of them that believe were of one heart and of, and of one soul. Neither said any of them that all of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. So that makes sense as well. Just because we're, we're relatives um, um, in terms of being blood related don't mean that we're going to grow up and have the same mindset you know. and the same focus in life. Right. Right. But so, let me ask you this. But what if the sermons again, what if they aren't beneficial and the church is technically dead? You know, the fellowship with the family is really the only plus with going. Yeah, what about in that situation? Jesus gave us a great example of that, okay. right? Who was my mother? Who was my father, hmm. right? So the idea, again, is not to be disrespectful to those who, and I got people who took care of me, Absolutely. right? Yeah. So it's not to be disrespectful to that or, or forgetting where you come from. Okay. It's who's on a path that God is putting you on and not being pulled away from that just because somebody is your cousin or sister or brother or uncle, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and just as a pastor, I want to state we got to be very careful with this because... You know, this is a, a sticky situation. You know, yeah. God came to Abraham and made Abraham move away from his family mm -hmm. for this very reason, because yeah. he had something different that he wanted to do with him. But the most important thing was Abraham had to be right with everybody he was leaving. And that's 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 the important part. Yeah. So, you know, we don't want, you don't want to bounce away from family or leave because you got a bad relationship with everybody. You don't like everyone, whatever. I tell people all the time. If you're not a good family member, you're going to be a bad church member. And mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't want you here. <laughs> you know, if you got, uh, you know, issues with your mother, with your father, with your family, whatever, don't come to ABC. Right. You know, don't come here and, and, and get a hold of some weapons to right. use at the Thanksgiving table. You right. know, I, we, don't, we don't do that here. You, right. you need to be in good standing with your family and you need to handle those things well before you can come and formulate uh, extended family, right. you know, and, and so we got to be very, very careful and understand that the church can't replace your family. Mm -hmm. So we as a church, we're not trying to replace your family. That's not what Jesus was stating when he said, behold, my father, my mother, whoever would do the will, do, uh, do, do my will. Mm -hmm. He wasn't saying I'm replacing my mother and, and my brothers right. and all of that. He wasn't replacing them, but he was just suggesting that my relationship has gone to a place now where I need to get somewhere spiritually. Mm -hmm. So I need those around me that can help me get where I need to get spiritually. Right. And uh, so it's a delicate balance here. Matthew 12 and 50 is a scripture that you referenced. For whosoever shall do the will of my father, which is in heaven. When they came to Jesus and said, hey, Jesus, you know, your mama needs you or uh, whatever. He said, well, here's my mother and father right here talking about the people that were sitting around listening to him. He said, whoever do the will of my father, which is in heaven, the same is my brother and my sister. And my mother. So he wasn't replacing them, but right. he was just stressing that because I'm at a different place now where I need something different. These are the people uh, that are around me like a brother, sister and a, and, and a mother, but they don't replace them. So in talking about that, if people make the move and they don't do it in good standing, maybe they start talking to this one and this one and saying, well, this change ain't for me no more. And this, that and the other. This is family. Mm -hmm. So now aren't you causing a rift? Aren't you causing things that could f cause other family members to fall away that maybe need to be there? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. And that's where you really have to be careful. Uh, and I hope people are listening to this, y'all, because this is this is some stuff that will really mess people up permanently. Mm -hmm. The reason we have church hurt and folks dog in the church and folks that just won't act right, different things or whatever is because somebody sowed discord in them. 
uh, that was supposed to be a Christian or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so you, you, you got to be careful when it comes to this. You can really harm people uh, with discord uh, when you sow that and cause them to leave with you. So mm -hmm. if you feel you need to go, then that's you. And right. you don't spread or you don't try to get people to go with you because right. right. then that's the devil. OK. Uh, and the reason being is they may need that level of church. You may have outgrown it, but they may need that level right. uh, so that they can lay a foundation. You, your foundation may be finished. Right. So you don't go tell them I'm leaving something wrong with the pastor. He tripping and then calling people over to your house. Mm -hmm. And, you know, every you know, I, we had a family that right after service on Sundays, they would meet in another house and re reservice. Right. And, you know, and yeah. pick and choose what they want to say. And, well, you know, he should have said it this way, that way. Or they would talk about, you know, me and my wife about our past background, whatever, whatever. And they, they would just try to get people on their side. And they, they were sowing so much discord to the point to where when they left, a lot of people left with them. And those people walked away from the faith totally. Like walked away from the faith. Some of them Hebrew Israelites now. Some of them don't want to have nothing to do with church. Some of them believe in some crazy ancestral stuff, you know. But they walked away because they were influenced by one person. Mm -hmm. One person got upset and didn't like something I said to him. And so he went and got his whole family on his side. They all got plucked out. And the ones that were struggling, like on the low level of their faith, mm -hmm. just now coming into it, yeah. stop doing stuff, man, yeah. I stop cussing, I stop drinking, I stop smoking, I'm really going to try. Now they out there just, you know, doing everything. Right. And that one person, man, you people don't realize you're going to pay for that. You yeah. know, you, that, the blood is on your hands for this. You can't, you're not going to get away with that. Matthew 18 and six says, but whosoever shall offend one of these little ones, which believe in me, it were better for him that a mouse millstone were hanged about his neck and he were drowned in the depths of the sea. So God is not going to let us hurt these little ones in the faith right. to the point to where they lose faith. And then you still sitting up in church at another church. You didn't bounce, went to another church and you in there, hey, hey, thank you, Jesus. Right. you know, just going crazy. And you got dead bodies all around you, outlined, chalk outlines all around you. Yeah, exactly. And that's what I was going to say. And you've spoke, spoken on that before. They were caught up in emotion and they destroyed all of these people. Now they're over it. And like you said, all these dead bodies are left behind. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you go, you better enjoy your time yeah. clapping and slapping and popping because you're going to pay for that. Yeah. Well, God, the, the, this, this scripture, I've seen people, you know, never recover from this because you, you know, you did something that God does not allow. So let's do this. Let's switch gears a little bit. And let's talk about what if I'm in a church where I'm not growing spiritually, but I'm in position. So mm -hmm. I'm not growing spiritually, but I'm helping somebody else. Ooh. I really feel like we're, I'm helping us. Like <laughs> <laughs> Should I remain there? Ah, um, when we were talking earlier, I was I was kind of talking about it with, with, with Pastor and you. Uh, as far as like, I've, I've I've felt like that before. Not being in a position, not wanting to be, not wanting to be fed, and being in a position, mm -hmm. but I wanted to be fed more than I wanted the opportunity to feed or teach. Mm. And allowing God to mature me and help me balance or bringing me somebody with the wisdom that knows how to do that to help me walk through that. Because I'm the type of person, like, especially if I really like something, mm -hmm. I want it. Let, let me hear it. Oh, OK. I like the way you said like I want it. Mm -hmm. But what happened is the understanding comes if. If I'm going to feed somebody, shouldn't I want to be fed? Like, how, how do I how do I share anything with anybody? If I'm not putting myself in a position, didn't Jesus even do that? It wasn't his reputation. As a young boy, that he was always in the synagogues having the conversations with the with the with the wise men and the elder men of, of that time, mm -hmm. because he knew eventually his life would become a life of giving, sharing, and ultimately introduce us to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Right. But so I, did, I, if you're not growing, then once you teach all of what you know, what else can you teach? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a real question. That, that's yeah. a real, real <laughs> statement. That's good. But that's this is why I desire to receive should be greater than I desire to teach. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. If we look at first Peter two and two as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. So even now. Right. The little bit of understanding that I have, because, you, know, you know, and I'm not saying it to be funny. I'm saying I position myself as that. Right. I still want to be fed, even though I may be able to share something 
that I've learned or something that I know because I understand it a little better than the next person. Mm -hmm. I want to be fed to. Yeah. And like you're saying, <laughs> when you run out, what are you going to do? Yeah. I'll tell you what they're going to do. YouTube. Yeah. And so when you're not getting it where you are, you're going to go. They're going to go to YouTube. Now the earth is flat. And God hate white people. <laughs> yep. Yep. And I mean, the list goes on and on. Grow yep. half their hair, the, the, the dashiki, the half Afro, half plaits. Yep. I mean, it just, it just got, why? Because they done stumbled on the YouTube. Oh, NAS about our ancestors. Yep. God it was hotep. Hmm. So, well, then let me ask you this, Pastor. <laughs> if I'm going on YouTube to get what I'm teaching now, could I possibly be teaching something contrary to what you as the pastor? Well, and that's teach? the most that's the who are, talk well, about it. That's the most important part. Talk about it. Um, that makes you dangerous to the church. Yeah. Because now you're getting unbalanced things and you're trying to feed sheep. Now, y'all have seen, you know, and sheep, you know, has taken on a negative con connotation because folk like Juanita Bonham and others, y'all dumb sheep. Da, 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 da. That's, that's, that, we're not even talking about that. Sheep served a very important purpose or shepherds wouldn't have been fooling with it. So the shepherds had a call for their sheep mm -hmm. and they, they could have five different herds of sheep mm -hmm. in one circumference and each shepherd could stand out in front of those sheep. And when that shepherd would do his call, only his sheep will walk to him. Yep. This is why God used the shepherd analogy for the pastor. Right. So because the pastor has to, the Bible says he watches for your souls, which means he watches where you are and knows what you need. Exactly. So at a church, we're all given things at our pace. Now I'm I'm just gonna take a shot in the dark. I'm up here with two members of, of ABC. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm the pastor. How many times has the sermon you heard on Sunday been exactly what you needed? Yeah, all the time. It's all the time. Isn't all that the, weird? All the time. Yeah. It, 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 because you're here. Yeah. And it's going to work that way. All yeah. these cameramen, everybody out here, there was something you needed. You didn't have to Google it. Mm -hmm. All you had to do was make it to church Sunday. Right? It, it, yeah. And, and I'm, I ain't through. I'm, <clears throat> and so all you had to do was make it to church Sunday. <laughs> and once you got here, <laughs> once you got here, <laughs> <laughs> but I meant that. Once you got here, you received exactly what you needed yes. in a timed situation. Right. So me watching for you, I don't just sit up and say, hmm, what am I going to teach on Sunday? Exactly. I know. Let me talk. I don't do that. Right. I'm planning a sermon, but half the time I don't stick to the plan because yeah. God is spontaneously inspiring me to say certain things that that the members need. But I'm not going to take you faster than you need to go. Right. It's going to be at the pace that you are called to be in. But if I'm going on Google and just looking up stuff yep. and, and Googling answers because my pastor is not preaching them, then I'm going to get ahead of him. Then when somebody come over to my house to eat, we just had this happen like a year ago. Somebody came up to the house to eat and they were like, hey, man, you know, a uh, pastor, you know, the message was good. wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. But man, have y'all ever really checked the, the, the earth out? Mm. I mean, the earth, man, this whole flat thing. See, they done went on YouTube. Yep. And so I don't teach flat earth because it's false. <laughs> but they, they, some people in here are trying to get it because they're watching something else. Right. And that's the danger, the, the danger of it. this. The Bible calls it a variance. Mm -hmm. You know, yep. so Amen. it uses seditions and variances. Paul rebukes those two things because a variance is when you enter something in that's different right. from what is coming from the leadership. And this can cause dissension and mutiny. Uh, John 10 and 3 says to him, the porter openeth and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name and leadeth them out. Now, what did you have to say, young man? I don't remember. Oh, OK. okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was a question, but I don't But It wasn't important. It wasn't important. I don't think remember. Think about it. Think about it. We're going to uh, take a break and come back. Gotcha, gotcha. We're going to talk more about it. Of course, we're trying to discuss ways of finding the right church. So keep it right here. It is the exposition. God's word never changes and it never weakens. It stands strong through any season. Trace your suffering back to its inception. 
This will help you pray intentionally instead of just emotionally. Yeah, see, when we're in a season of, of, of discipline or a season of trials or tribulations, a lot of times we begin to pray emotionally because we hurt. You're going through a season, some of you, where if you take your eyes off him, it's over. If we judge things by how they appear and react the wrong way in any given season, then we may forfeit the blessing of the new coming season because a new season is coming. Open your eyes. You got past it, didn't you? Good morning. Today's what? December 12, 2017. I have a message. I know many pastors are not going to like this, but oh well, tough. Look here. My message to you is stop going to church. They only want your money. If you think rationally about it, it is a ridiculous notion to think that anyone benefits much from sitting through the recap of something they already know week after week. It's even more ridiculous to believe that people need to be there every week in order to grow spiritually. My personal opinion is that it's just not worth going after a certain amount of time. It's not even set up for fellowship. You come alone, you sit alone, you worship alone, you listen to the sermon alone, and you leave alone. Real fellowship happens at Starbucks. I think when you do go to church, sometimes it depends on the preacher. They don't focus on relationship. They yeah. focus on the specific religion that has been created. Like humans created this religion. Like yeah. Christian is not even, like we realize some stuff that's not even in the Bible. Yeah. And so that means if Christian is not in the Bible, we made this up. So then we're going to make it up and then still judge each other, each other. And we all doing terrible things good things like none of us yeah. are perfect yeah. so i think if they would focus more on relationship there's actually there's no praying there's no, no praying. sermon there's no word it's just music and it's just a feeling oh but it's I, christian it is yeah, yeah but there is some theme because otherwise it's a concert right i mean <laughs> <laughs> yes it's, it's a lot of gospel has, songs it is a, it's very yeah there's the choir it's gospel music um it you is jesus walks <laughs> Yeah, so it's, Thank it's you, kind Courtney. of a mixture. <laughs> Thank you. We are going to do clarify. something special for our audience. Uh, uh, Guillermo, this is, I don't know if you've seen Guillermo, but he's... he's oh, he's, my God. He's great. You look great. So, Woo! Thank you. <laughs> All right. So we're talking about it, finding the right church, how to find the right church, and we've got some more good questions, so I want to go here. Wait, wait, before you go there. Okay. Jay needs to say what yes, I, finish your I talk. stopped him from saying. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, <laughs> uh, what, what was, happened was. What ha well, see, what had happened was. Mm -hmm. No, just talking about um, when you were hinting about just the, the idea of church hopping and why people go to different services and getting fed from different miles. Mm -hmm. um, and it becomes confusing and or leads you astray. I was just saying that the desire should leave if you're in the proper fellowship. If you're under the right um, leadership, that desire should leave because mm -hmm. you're full from what you're receiving anyway. Mm -hmm. So for, for me, for my household, I mean, even my wife, like we don't listen to anybody else. Um, in addition to pastor, obviously my wife will listen to me, but I'm saying in terms of being spiritually fed, there is absolutely no desire. And I come from that world. I come from the world where, you know, you go to your church service and then there's an afternoon service across town. And then there's a musical and then somebody gets up to preach there and then midweek service is like three or four of those going on. So I come from that world. But as I matured and understood or even I got to a place where I'm being complete, I'm being completely fed. My, the meal here, here is, is full. Right. So I don't need anything else. Mm -hmm. I, I used to be a YouTube watcher as well. Now, I didn't buy, have 20 or 40 different people, <laughs> but I found myself even then before I matured trying to find people that would that, that would talk similar to or as close to what, what passage you were saying at the time. And then even then I would run it past them and then we would dig deeper and, and figure out that ain't what they were really talking about anyway. Yeah. But the idea is that, you know, if you're getting fed and, and it's what you're supposed to have, as Pastor you were saying, in that time of your life, them, him understanding where everyone is and, and uh, as far as the sheep that he's shepherding, then you don't have any desire to go anywhere else. Oh, well, and then like the analogy you gave um, uh, while we were in, on the break, you know, it's just like eating a plate, you know. Yeah. I mean, you don't go to multiple houses for dinner. Right. 
You know, once you go to a house, unless you went to a house and the food wasn't good. Right. You know, I've done that before. You right. go and eat and then didn't like it and then you go get some fast food. But if, if it was sufficient and it filled you up, you don't leave there just, and then go and eat another plate somewhere. Right. It's just, there's you know, no need. It's no need. You don't have that desire. And I think that's the biggest thing. Not that we're knocking, listening to other preachers and different things like that. I'm not knocking that. But I'm just saying someone watching for your soul is very important. Yeah. You know, I can't tell you how many people were following, you know, EX ministries and following the messages and the sermons and different things. And then they got a hold of somebody that on, on right on YouTube that sounded similar. And they was all saying he's similar. He just like yeah. this, this, this. And then what happened? The brother got off into the Hebrew Israelite stuff, got off into the black stuff, whatever, and led a bunch of people astray. And so that's what I'm saying. Without anyone watching for your souls, mm -hmm. you know, I got up in here and I checked the church on that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Sure I did. checked yeah. them. I said, hey, if you listen to this brother right here, mm -hmm. this brother's going to lead you astray. And I said that way before he did it. Yeah. And so but that was because the, the Holy Ghost had revealed it to me. Yeah. And I can watch for the souls of the people. <clears throat> so that's the importance of being planted. You know, yeah, you're going to hear a good sermon here. You may turn on, it may hear a good one on YouTube. You know, y'all are watching this. This is, this is good, you know. Right. But this is, this can only be a supplement. It can only be a vitamin. It can't right. be the, all you need because the fellowship is missing. Mm -hmm. You don't know those that labor among you. All of the rules and the regulations of being planted that God gives, they're there for a reason. Right, amen. Exactly. exactly. So what should we do if we are a part of a church where we really enjoy the preach? I mean, the pastor lay us out every single Ooh. Sunday. But we don't necessarily like to fellowship with the members. We just kind of shoot out the door once church is over because okay, I don't define, know them like that. Carmina, let's define, you, you know, these folks. Let, let's define lay them out. Okay, okay. <laughs> we don't, he we ministers don't, in a manner so there that you go, I am unable to control myself. I am running around the church at top <laughs> speed because it was so powerful. That's okay, what top about. speed. Mm -hmm. I, I guess my question would be, why don't you want to fellowship with the people that you're seeing service with, right? And then, then my follow-up would be, well, is there something wrong with them or is there something wrong with you? You understand what I'm saying? Like, it, it just really doesn't make sense. So, I'm reclusive at church. It just don't make it. A, it's a room full of people. God's people, people you supposed to love. Right, right. Uh, so in, in order to fellowship, we have to be filled with God's spirit or with the spirit of God so that we can have the fruits needed to alter our behavior towards others. Mm -hmm. Right. So Romans 12 and 10 says, be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love and, and honor, preferring one another. So again, as we know, the commandments are something to one, love the neighbor as yourself. So we have to be. So, OK, so we come here. I come to ABC. Mm -hmm. Pastor can preach. Mm -hmm. it's, it's fantastic every single time. I can't think of one time where I didn't enjoy it. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. It's not one time that I didn't enjoy it. But I, but I also um, am highly appreciative. And I talk to my wife about it a lot that I have the opportunity to serve the times that I'm called upon to do that. It, it, it's equally satisfying to me, but that goes back to what we said earlier, right? I, I, I don't have the desire more to feed or to teach or to steer somebody than I, than I have of to be fed as well. It's a, it's a balanced meal for me. I mm -hmm. want both. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, a little bit more of being fed. Right. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Right. Mm -hmm. And as a pastor, going back to your original question, uh, not one to fellowship, I don't like people like that. Right. I just, I just don't. I don't understand it. And, and a little piece of your uh, scripture, uh, Romans 12 and 10 that you read, it said, prefer in one another. Yeah. Why you don't prefer these people? Talk about it. You know, why all your friends, yeah. weed smoking, <laughs> tatted faced heathens, all right. why all your friends in sin? <laughs> Why everybody you friends with and liking and commenting on in some kind of debauchery? Yeah. Why you don't like the church people? Why you don't want to be around the church people? You know, that bothers me as a pastor. Mm -hmm. And and the reason it bothers me is because how you going to come for the preaching and I'm preaching about fellowship and you don't fellowship? Right. Yeah. So what other things you eating the meat and spitting the bones out? Uh oh, uh -oh. And that's that's my thing. Like, okay, so are you one of the ones that's in it? Well, now he he preaches good concerning this, but you know he he really don't touch on this. And that. Well, now you're opening the door for sedition, discord, mm -hmm. and 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 all the things we talked about and variance. Right. And so now I'm waiting on you to spring the flat earth on somebody in here. You know that that's just where it's, where it's gonna go. Right. And so you know people like this make my teeth itch. I actually wrote that in the note. Teeth itch. 
<laughs> Hebrews 13 and 17. Obey them that have rule over you and submit yourselves for they watch for your souls. This is talking about spiritual leader, a pastor, mm. OK, a spiritual leader watching for your souls. This ain't talking about the, the president and a king or nothing. It's talking about spiritual leaders. He said, obey them that have rule over you and submit yourself for they watch for your souls as they that must give an account that they may do it with joy and not with grief, because if they do it with grief, it's unprofitable for you. Mm -hmm. right. And so this is scripture here. Right. So we have to be very careful with this. We don't want to go to a church where we don't like the people. We just like the preaching. And I'll go a step further, Carmina. I've had people come and say they don't like me, but they like the preaching. That makes no sense. Yeah. That makes no sense. Yeah. And then they want to meet with you so they can tell you they're leaving. You know, we don't do that here. We don't practice that. Right. You don't get to give you don't get an opportunity to give me a piece of your mind before you leave. Right. You, there's no meetings and you telling me you leaving. Right. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, <laughs> we we even sit down for you to do that because right. that that you know, <clears throat> you don't tell them how that might turn out. <laughs> but uh, it's unprofitable for you to you know to to be that way where you're trying to pick and choose. Well, I like the pastor, but I don't like the first lady. Well, then you need to leave. Yes, immediately. Because that's his wife. He like her. Yeah. I hope. Well, you know, you know the day. So anyway, you don't want them to do it with grief. So you want to make sure that you're not one that's picking and choosing and eating the meat and spitting out the bones and, you know, you know, you're not laughing at the jokes, just sitting there. Well, you know, he's telling a few too many jokes. You're at the wrong church because I tell jokes all the time. All the time. She's just at the wrong church. Okay, we, anyway. ABC like it. We like it. I mean, yeah. I, you got to take a little sugar with the medicine because yeah. the medicine is strong. Because yeah. we do get cut. So, yeah. I <laughs> yes, jokes. you do, Bobby. Okay, go <laughs> That's always me. Well, what about this? And, and, and I really want you to kind of stretch out on this, both of you gentlemen, because I see so many, so much of this. How important is it for families to worship together at the same church? especially as it relates to husbands and wives. And I know there are times where maybe the wife is leading praise and worship here and the husband may be the minister of music here. How does that work? Wow. And especially how does that impact your home, your kids, things like that? So the, I, thought, I thought the husband and the wife, I mean, I thought the husband would leave the, the father and the, and the mother to cleave to his wife and then, mm -hmm. right? And then they become one flesh, mm -hmm. right? That's, that's the Bible. So I... I how does one flesh in the spirit realm worship God and fellowship with others as two in the spiritual fellowship family realm? So how do you <laughs> how are you one on one end of it and then you're two separate people on the other end of it? That makes sense. Again, that's confusion, which God is not the author of that. And so right. Genesis 2 and 24 says, therefore, shall a man leave, as I just stated, his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. So. You absolutely and that's spiritual. Should, and that's spiritual, right? Mm -hmm. But you should absolutely on the physical side, mm -hmm. on the natural side, should absolutely be going to the same church. Well, because the man is the head of the house. So why is the wife not following the man anyway? Right? God covers the man, the man covers the woman. That's scripture as well. So all that is order that God already set in place for us. Why would anybody try to go outside of that for any situation? There's no circumstance where it it could present itself where to, to where that would be okay. Mm -hmm. right. So that's crazy. Yeah, well, the mere fact that two people can't agree on attending church together tells me that there's more to this story. Mm. I mean, there's some order, some bad order in the house. There's some dis there's somebody ain't wearing the, the right pants yeah. in the house. <laughs> now, I personally quit playing for churches for money because I wanted my family together in worship. Mm. Uh, I was, you know, I was playing for churches. I was making money. At one point, I was getting paid by three churches on Sundays. Wow. Three different churches on one Sunday. And my wife wasn't with me. And the Lord spoke to me one day and said, how much do you trust me? His exact words. And I said, I trust you. You're my Lord and Savior. I trust you. He said, well, do you trust me enough to give up that money so that you can have your family with you? Because if you're their leader, you got to be with them. If my wife was to go to another church, and I'm not covering her, anything could influence her. Yeah. And so God was serious about that. It was almost like I couldn't go any further until I dealt with myself on that. And I said, you know what? I'm going to do it. And I quit cold turkey. I quit all of them. My wife right out there, she tell you, I quit them all cold turkey and just said, God, I'm going to trust you. 
And it was rough at first, but then he began to open up doors because that was important to him. Right. I was making great money, but if my family was not secure and safe under my leading, then what good is the money? Right. What Man. good is the money if the, the order isn't right? Right. That's counterproductive. I'm not going to church for money or for a job if I know I shouldn't be there. Right. It's folks will change their whole philosophy, their faith, what yep. they really know to be true mm -hmm. to get a check planned for a check. Yeah. Or just going to a church and working for a church. Yeah. They will change everything. And the, you know what I teach here is I don't want my wife to see me flake and shake over some money like that. Right. If this is what I'm supposed to believe, if this is what the Bible says, I'm not going and getting up under no corrupt leadership uh, and, and, and you know, risking the safety of my family over some money. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm going right. to trust God because this is important to him. I want it to be important to me. I mean, and the, the real question is, would you go there if you weren't getting paid? Talk about it. Talk about <laughs> would it. you go there? I mean, the musicians, even in the, the musicians of old and the old time at church we used to go to, when it was time for the preaching, what would they do? Go to the back. Go outside. They out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Gone. They don't want to hear their own preacher. Yeah. You going to a church, and then folks be hitting me up on Instagram and all these, all knocked, all knocked. And I'll be like, don't you go to so-and-so's church? Well, yeah, you know, I go there, you know, but I'm, you know, I'm over the, I'm over the sound system, you know, but, 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 but man, I'm with you, doc. I'm with, no, that's crazy. Yeah. You don't even like that place you're going, yeah. but you're going for the money. So that, this is an epidemic. I mean, this, this has got to, got to stop because what ends up happening is when the children in that family grow up, mass confusion. Yep. They always, I mean, as soon as they old enough to not go to church no more, they, they, they stop going. Mm. Yep. They stopped going while you was getting that check for your family. Now you have no family. Yep. So Acts 2 and 44 says, and all that believed were together and had how many things in common? All, all things. things. All things in common. All things. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the churches that push women. Mm. The ones that have women pastors, co-pastors, just women operating in leadership. Let's talk about that. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, this is easy. Okay. I know it sounds deep, but it's not deep. It's written right in the Bible. It is. Like, I don't need an exegese. I don't have to have a concordance. Okay. I can just quote, I can just read some scripture. Okay. This is emasculating to men. Okay. Whenever women are above men in the spirit realm, it's emasculating because it's against God's order. Women should never lead men spiritually in any instance. Mm. Okay, now don't go well. My son, I taught him when he was little. You taught him a lot of stuff when he was little. You taught him how to put his drawers on. You ain't finna put his drawers on and he's a grown man. Grown man, talk about it, yeah. It's some foolishness. Don't, yeah. don't even come to me. Uh, remember Jake's taught that. Oh, well, Mary carried the word in her belly for nine months. That the word was in the woman first. Mm -mm. You, that's just, that's so fruity. But women should never lead men spiritually in any instance. This goes against the order of God. They are to teach the. <laughs> Come on. What's missing? Like, what's missing in the church? Mm. What's missing in the church, Carmen? I mean, like, there's a big old hole in the church. What, what, what's missing? The young ladies mm -hmm. are, they don't have no teaching, they don't have any teaching. They don't know how to love their husbands. That's why there's a lot of divorce. They don't know how to pray for their husband. They don't know how to love their children. They, they on the internet showing themselves. Mm -hmm. Grandmama got an Instagram page. Mm -hmm. She can, can't find her phone. Mm -hmm. Somebody, somebody, where my phone at so I can go live? I cannot. Uh, why, why you going live, granny? <laughs> but she on Instagram taking oh, selfies. Man. It's got a selfie <clears throat> stick. What you got a selfie stick for? Like, uh, arthritis won't even let you wrap your hands around. It's just showing out. They show, they showing out, and the the younger girls have no one to look up to, no one to tell them to keep their virginity. Yeah. Don't sleep with these boys. Yeah. These boys aren't gonna want you later. All of this is gonna add up. Yeah. What you doing now? Don't don't have a baby out of wedlock. Mm -hmm. Don't don't get the clap. What? You folks still get that? 
<laughs> I'm sure. Don't do these things. Right. They need an older woman. They don't need no man in there teaching them this. Right. You hear how weird it sounded oh, when I just said it. Right, right, it's right, all right. out of order. Right, right, Why are you right. telling a young girl right. that? That's the, that's the older women's <laughs> job. They supposed to be telling them this, but where are the older women? In there, in the sanctuary, yep. preaching to the men, calling out what the men ought to be doing. Mm -hmm. And that's so against God. And so that leaves that hole in the church where these young girls grow up not knowing how to be homemakers, not knowing how to cook nothing, not knowing how to, how to dress themselves, showing their bodies. All of these things come because that hole is in the church. And, and, you know, uh, women are trying to teach men. So the Bible is specific. The feminist agenda is not allowed in the church, but all of this is feminism and the church of Thyatira all over again where Jezebel took over. First Corinthians 11 and 3 says, but I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. The head of every woman is the man and the head of Christ is God. So don't come telling me, oh, but God lifted that later and he said, uh, uh, your sons and your daughter shall prophesy. Yeah, okay, well, let your daughter prophesy as long as her head is covered Amen. by a man, according Amen. to the Bible. Ain't that what Philip's daughters did? Yep. I mean, come on, we can, we, we, we can go there if you want to. Oh, but wait a minute, God lifted it off and of let the women see. What if there's no man qualified? Then there's no word there. Everybody just be quiet and read the word. Well, Would you just get someone and sit down? Ain't nobody yeah. said there has to be. Yeah. Maybe that church should have never been started. Yeah. First Timothy 2 and 12. But I suffer not a woman to teach nor to assert authority over man, but to be in silence. Oh, but those are Paul's words. And you, you know, that's Paul's opinion. <laughs> or was it his opinion when he when he said be instant in season and out of season? Mm -hmm. The very call you say you have was Paul's words. Mm hmm. Yep. Good. Go on, Carmen. Okay. Uh, you know. <laughs> this is so what about the people that say, and we kind of touched on this a little earlier, what about the people that say church is not important and they are just growing spiritually without it? They're just at home, just growing. And these are the <laughs> same people that are just picking and choosing what they want to believe in the Bible, right? The Bible tells us that the Holy Ghost formed the, the, the first church and it was beneficial and necessary. Mm -hmm. So that's two separate things. It was beneficial mm -hmm. and it's necessary. So if it's necessary, then how can you say it's not important? If God said it was necessary. He wouldn't have built it. It has not changed. God hasn't changed that mm -hmm. at all. So Acts 2 and 42 says, and they continue steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayer. So steadfastly continue, mm -hmm. continue steadfastly. Mm -hmm. That. That doesn't end. That's a continue. Yeah. It, it, it keeps going. So the people that feel like they don't need the church, that, that's just a problem with authority and or or a deeper issue that has something to do with their current earthly father. Right. Um, that will that will have them to feel that way or some type of church hurt, as we've uh, talked about as well. Mm -hmm. And people that say that to me, all the, I tell them all the time. Uh, OK, let, let's wait till your kids grow up. Um. Let's yeah. wait till your marriage uh, get a little older and you start going through some things. Let's let, let's see if you can make it without the church. Right. Uh, the church is important and you're going to regret it, regret it later on. You're going to need a shepherd. You're going to need it. Yeah. You're going to need the church. Yeah. You're going to need the church before the church needs you. Talk about it. You're going to need the church. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, your children need like minded peer groups and influences and. Uh, the husband and wife need balance and authority over them spiritually. These are things you cannot replace. You can't replace this stuff at bedside Baptist. That's right. Sitting at home. You can't you, you're not going to you're not going to do it. Uh, these things are very important. And when your kids grow up, they need that. God created the church and the need will always remain. That's why the seven churches of Asia, when he judged them all, Jesus judged the pastors or the angels of those churches. He did not close one of them. He did not close. He told them, y'all get it together. Mm -hmm. Now, if they weren't necessary, wouldn't he have just closed it and the church age end? Yeah. No, he didn't close them. He mm -hmm. just said, hey, y'all need to get it together. And so it's the same thing here. God is not closing churches because men are corrupt. Right. Men just need to get it together. Acts 16 and 5 says, and so were the churches established in the faith and they increased in number daily. The one thing I heard a lot, and I know, Pastor, you can relate to this. We heard it a lot growing up. Touch not my <clears throat> anointed. Now, what does that really mean? That's what the does protection that really mean? Touch not my anointed. Mm -hmm. it, it means exactly what it says. <laughs> okay. And you bet not do it, right? It does. So 
the, it, it comes from when, so David was going to kill Saul, mm -hmm. right? And even though he was a corrupt leader, God chose him. So David couldn't kill him and take his place. Right. When men are chosen by God, we cannot destroy them without grave repercussion. So that's why he had it stated and written and documented, touch not my anointed. First Chronicles 16 to 22 saying, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. That's why it's there, because it means exactly that. Yeah. And uh, what was it, Elisha that the little kids was making fun of and the she bear came out of nowhere and ripped them apart? Yep. Yeah, yeah. My mom used to scare me with that story. <laughs> We'd be in there talking about a preacher or saying something. She'd come in and say, wait a minute now. Remember the she bear, boy. Yeah. We didn't sleep that night. <laughs> but this is this this scripture is dear to me uh, because I get accused of this all the time. Yes. So I'm the dude that's touching every I'm touching all the anointed, even though I ain't touching them. I they <laughs> well, but <laughs> they they accuse me of this all the time. Um, they say you know that I'm I'm touching God's anointed. I'm you know trying to hurt people, destroy people, the end their ministries, all of this stuff. You know, at one point, Carmen, and you in the gospel music. Uh, field, I got accused of trying to kill the gospel music industry. I don't know if you remember that, but they had a meeting about me at the GMWA and they had my picture on their website. Mm -hmm. And they said I was trying to destroy the gospel because I was, you know, calling things out. Yeah. But I am called of God to correct things that are done publicly, right. like the apostles of old did. So when it's done publicly, it's my duty from God to call it out. I'm not listening to y'all. I'm not listening to you. I'm not listening to you. I'm listening to God. Amen. That's been my call for the last 25 years. That's what I've done because he called me to do it. But he always, get, my instructions were deal with what they do in public because obviously what they do in public, they're proud of. But don't deal. And even, even this, when they're caught up in scandal in public and go to jail and all that, I don't even deal with that right. because I consider that personal. But when they attack the word and do something against the word and lead people astray, that's where I have to deal with it because that's what God called me to do. If you have a problem with it, get Jesus on the main line and tell, tell him because that's want. who called me to do it. And you know, I'm going to listen to him. <laughs> so I do not try to take men down because of their personal failures and private issues uh, because all men have those. Yeah. Amen. Right. Right. That's yeah. why I don't believe in pastors making folks stand up. And, and confess they sin in front of everybody. Oh, y'all, I did it again. Go on and tell them what you did. Yeah, I was messing with the janitor again. I, I, don't, I, I don't believe in that because, I mean, are we going to pass... <laughs> Are we going to pass the microphone like Ike Turner? That's right. Because that's what you got to do. Yeah. If, if, if that Everybody person going to confess they said, I need yeah. that mic to go all the way around. <laughs> I don't even want to say the song they were singing in the movie. But pass the mic. I need, I need everybody. Anna Maida get her turn. And Ike Spider get his turn. Everybody get their turn in the microphone. That's right. Because uh, well, everybody's got that. So that's not me. I don't <laughs> take down people for personal <laughs> This is the craziest episode. But I don't take down being because of personal failures and private issues. Amen. <laughs> That's not what I'm called to do. And I do not believe anyone is called to do that. Okay. Because there's no Bible okay. for it. There's no shade room in, in the Bible. Gospel version. <laughs> the gospel shade version room. of the shade room. There's nobody gossiping and talking about people's personal affairs and stuff in the Bible and calling them. That, that, that just didn't happen in the Bible. So I got to have a biblical example of what I do, which I have. However, when it's done publicly, it requires public rebuke. And this is not defiance of scripture at all. Galatians 2 and 14 even goes on where Paul had to rebuke Peter in front of everyone. He did it because what Peter was doing, he was doing in front of everyone. OK, so as members. Should we correct the pastor when we see an error? I mean, can we call out the personal failures and or doctrinal errors or as they say in the world, can we check them? <laughs> <laughs> Did you just snatch? Mm -hmm. The Bible says to rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father. Amen. Right? So my son over there, the one that's producing this show, you know, he, he has talked to me as a son and said, you know, at times, dad. You know, you hurt me or that hurt me or the way you said it or when you said it or you were wrong about this or that, you know, when the way you did it. Okay. And I heard him and I apologized because right. he entreated me as a father. Right. You and see then, what I'm saying? Yeah. But if he had tried to publicly humiliate me to venerate himself, I'd have beat his tail. Mm -hmm. 
1 Timothy 5 and 1, rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father and the younger men as brothers. Okay. That's, that, that's scripture. Okay. So I think what we need to keep in mind, and I, and I learned this um, probably younger than most, but pastors are human and they fail. I mean, I think we just have to keep that perspective. So I, I don't really understand why people have such an issue with pastors making mistakes. The moment you become a pastor, you don't become this invincible. The, the only man that ever will walk this earth that has no record of sin in his life would be Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. that's, that's period. Mm -hmm. So we're not talking about personal failure or bad judgment here. We're talking about men that do not preach sound doctrine and use the church for personal gain instead of truly helping people. Mm -hmm. So if we look at Revelations 2 and 5, it says, remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen and repent. And do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. So this is God showing you that he has grace for pastors because they're human beings. They, mistakes will happen, but they're, they're called to repent just like anybody else. So because you're a pastor, you don't get a pass to do anything that you want because you accept that type of authority over people. You know what I mean? But yeah. I'm saying as me as a lay member, mm -hmm. I can't check them. <laughs> No, nah, you, you can't. <laughs> no. Your lips no. might fall. But there, there, is a, there is a biblical order concerning rebuking elders okay. and leaders. Okay? It has to be done by leadership. Okay? So this is another important aspect of the church. The yeah. church is supposed to handle this. It has to be done by leadership. Private issues need to have two or more witnesses according to the Bible. Yeah. And the rebuke should be done before the leadership only according to Scripture. Yeah. All right? So this is when it's in leadership, the leadership handles it. First Timothy 5 and 9, against an elder receive not an accusation, but before two or three witnesses. Them that sin rebuke before all that others may also fear. You got to keep this in context, them that sin rebuke before all, because in context it's talking about the leadership, the elders. Mm -hmm. It goes with this passage. So it's saying that it, the elders or the leaders should be rebuked before the other elders and leaders so that the other elders and leaders would fear. Amen. So I can't go online and have myself car, just car. don't say their name. <laughs> <laughs> That's even worse. And I hate that, especially with Facebook and stuff. You go online. Well, there's this church yeah, I go to. It. It. I'm not going to call no name. It's in your bio. <laughs> That's some ridiculous foolishness. You took a picture at the church. Right. Click right in the background. Like this. No. There you go. So I have another question. <laughs> Does God assign us to churches or are we to pick and choose the church we fellowship with? Is it on us or do we put it on God? Uh, an, another great question. And another one from my personal testimony. So I, I feel like what, what, what personally for what my family needed was here in Texas. So we, re, we relocated. Hey, wife, uh, babe, honey, uh, we're leaving Detroit. You did not call her wife. Uh, I didn't. No, no. I don't remember what I call it. No, yeah, right. But, but you know, the edited version. Right, right. That's the edited version. Right, right. But what I needed for my family really was here in Texas. And, and, and so I prayed to God um, to make a way for me to get here, and he did. It was probably one of the easiest, hardest decisions I ever made in my life. Easy in that it was clear that God was leading me, but hard because it was definitely something that I was unfamiliar with and had no point of reference for it at all. So it wasn't so much that God assigned me here. Um, I just used my authority as the head of my household to get us here so we could receive what we needed as a family. And that's just as simply put. Um, amen. Yeah. Well, I'm going to close with this, th this particular question. I think it's a natural decision before it's a spiritual one. Um, we use this same logic for our jobs and where we live. People move, move all over for money. They select neighborhoods for the school systems and safety of their family. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to church, they're just right in there. Mm -hmm. They'll choose one that's the quickest drive, the easiest to get to, even though it has not enhanced their lives one bit. Mm -hmm. Why is the emphasis always on the money, the career, and the success for the family, but the spiritual side is always based on conveniences and familiarity? Wow. You can work and provide your children and families with money to buy things, but these things won't save you. You can move around and allow your job to help you see the world, but if you aren't planted and growing roots, your children will suffer. When the focus of your life is success and accolades, then your family will seek those things as well. But when you plant yourself in a fellowship that teaches sound doctrine and builds a strong, influential community within it, your job parenting, marrying, and maturing is made easier. 
Isn't that a blessing? Yes, it is. It's easier. Seeing examples of where you are trying to go helps so much. Hearing messages about God's order, his blessings, and his love with balance and guidance helps you more than you can see right now. When you are planted, I mean, when you are not planted, you are in a dangerous place. You are swayed by strange voices and opinions. And this isn't to get spooky with anyone because a lot of churches will scare you half to death. You know, I, I said that in one of the sermons. You yeah. think that in, out, if you walk out the door, you're going to get hit by a bus. Yeah. Or you think when you walk out the back door, it's, it's a cliff and you're just going to keep falling if you leave. They'll scare you. Oh, you can't leave. Oh, you can't leave the church. <laughs> oh, what? You just be talking with them. Yeah, I just feel like God has moved me on. <laughs> You can't leave. You can't leave. You can't leave. I mean, they had you scared to death. You yeah. scared like, okay, I can't leave. <laughs> I'm sorry. Right, I'm sorry. Okay, I'll stay. I'll just stay and rot like the rest of you. I mean, so this is, you know, this is this is important for you to know that, I mean, that's why I said this is a natural decision as well as a spiritual one. Right. You know, but to neglect this decision and yet pray for God to bless you is inconsistent. So how are you going to only hear the blessings from God, but you ain't hearing the direction from God? Hmm. You're not even in a place where you can be blessed. You're not in a place where you can hear him. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. You, you don't have the faith to get what you're praying for because you're not hearing hmm. what you need to hear. Yeah. Amen. He's given us what we need, which is the church. We just have to find the right one and plug in. Remember, success to God is not natural at all. But it's spiritual and what's important to him must remain important to us. Jeremiah 23 and one. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. You have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doing, saith the Lord. And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries, whether I have driven them and will bring them again to their foes and they shall be fruitful and increase. But this is the important part that the Hebrews miss. And I will set up shepherds up over them, which shall feed them and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed. Neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. Thank you.